Yeah, I want to just start um, by just honoring the guys that uh, you know played their last game for us tonight. I, I think this team certainly were disappointed. It's not the not the right word. I mean, that was painful, and you know, I hurt for these guys because they put so much into this, and that one got away from us. But um, you know, there are a lot of guys that this evening was their last time representing Vanderbilt. And, Guys that have, um, in the first two seasons with me, have, have jumped in, fully submerged in what we're building. Um, and guys that I have a lot of pride in, pride that they represent me and, and that I have a lot of respect for and a lot of love for. And, um, just want to take the time to honor them and to thank them for their contributions because um, the investment they've made in this program is going to help us get to where we're going. And you know we can feel however we want to feel right now, and we're you know we're you know beat up from the result. We wanted to extend our season, but those feelings don't capture the direct direction that we're headed. And you know the choices and behaviors that we have moving forward are going to help us unlock our potential. I think we've made a lot of improvements as a program. We'll take the time over the next few weeks to unpack that and unpack the learning from the season to make sure that we're plotting a course forward. So that when we get going in January with Team Three, that we're going to be um, on a path to further improvement. And um, as far as the game tonight, uh, you know, first of all, credit to Tennessee, credit to Coach Hype. We got that team ready to play. They bounced back from a tough one, and you know, um, had a great effort on their end. I felt like in the first half, you know, we were struggling. Offensively, we, we were able to sustain a couple drives, but had some self-inflicted wounds that kept us from puncturing the end zone. Uh, defensively, the first drive was about the long reception to set up the score. Their second score was about missed opportunities. Uh, I think two fourth down conversions on that drive. But I thought we settled in and started to plan the game that we wanted to play defensively in the first half. Obviously, the punt return for a touchdown was a critical breakdown and a huge swing of momentum to get them to 21. Um, you know, and then the, the second half was just, it was just an unfortunate swing there where, you know, we had three consecutive possessions for them that started at midfield. The first was a fourth down conversion attempt on our end that came up short. Um, the second was our fake punt that we fumbled back to them after converting. And the third was a punt return that, um, they got out to midfield and you know I still felt like we were going to be in position defensively to hold on but you know we um, we played uncharacteristically in that second half played unstructured against the run and we played against a good opponent and when we're, where we were a gap short or a step slow um, they made us pay by outrunning us to the end zone and it was a night where we weren't able to down our mistakes I thought tackling um, you know, was a little suspect. I mean, there were things that fundamentally, fundamentally, technically, we needed to do better. But I also think it was more of a structural issue where, you know, we were a little, little slow getting to the fit, and we were playing against good players that made us pay. So um, obviously, the game ran away from us there, and the explosive touchdowns are disappointing. They hurt, um, but uh, again, we're gonna we're gonna learn from this. We're gonna take ownership of it. Um, and we're going to bottle up the emotion around the feeling we have right now, and we're going to apply it in January and get back together and go to work. Um, tonight for me is about honoring the players that played their last game and honoring the commitment of the, the players that um, have helped us build this program at this point. And um, the legacy they'll leave is, is all that is to come for this program, which um, again, for us, is, is uh, the future is very bright, and we love where we're at. So with that, I'm happy to open up for questions. Um, how did you make the decision to go to AJ when you did, and then to go back to Mike at the end? You know, what was what was the process there? Well, um, first of all, we you know M Mike Wright has been just a, a great bright spot in the season. Both his resilience, um, battling through personal disappointment, and then obviously getting in and um, and leading our team to wins in consecutive conference games. I think that's um, 
something that that um, he should be really proud of. And AJ hadn't played football in a few weeks, and we wanted to we wanted to give. Uh, Mike, the opportunity that he deserved to, to um, take the field here tonight and to, to lead our team. Um, when we got to a point where we knew we were going to need to throw to win, we felt like AJ positioned us best to do that. So that's why we went to him. You know, we weren't able to get that run game going, and there came a point. I think it was four scores where we, we determined that it was it was time to start trying to get the ball out on the perimeter and certainly try to get some vertical pass game going. Um, you know, we, we found some success that way. Obviously, the, the overturn um, double move there hurt, but um, still weren't able to find the end zone. And, you know, AJ's been banged up, and, um, you know, he took a, another hit there um, in his last series. And at some point, you know, we wanted to make sure we we protected him and, and, and made sure we gave him a chance to keep developing. and. Um, you know, we don't want to, to him to end the season um, where he's battling another injury. So we, we went back to Mike to finish the game off, and, and that was why the decision was made. It, it felt like, um, you know, like a lot of first down runs early and, and um, you know, play calling that I think some people would, would call conservative, uh, despite Tennessee getting off the 63 points last week. Was that, you know, to try to keep their offense in check, or, or you know, how would you? Um, uh, take us through the, the game plan on offense. Yeah, I mean, that, that's been our identity. It's been our identity that's been successful. I mean, we've been a team that's been a run first team, and that's delivered us two consecutive conference victories. Um, we wanted to try to establish that run game. And, um, you know, we were able to early on get some, you know, conversions on second down that, you know, don't show up on the stat sheet as you look at our third down conversions, which wasn't good enough, but what I saw was drives that um, rhythm was killed on the self-inflicted wounds, the penalties, um, like I said, the mishandled snap. Uh, there were just some things that we did that um, that destroyed the momentum of those drives and, um, you know, put us in third down situations where we weren't able to convert. We were plan playing to our identity. That's what's been our formula has been. And, uh, part of that is to, to limit the, the you know possessions for the opponent. I mean that's that's a part of that for sure. But um, obviously we didn't have success with it. And like I said, I think the the second half where the game really took off away from us, we just had a breakdown there in complementary football where um, they're starting on short fields and you know we weren't able to overcome that. So, do you wish you'd maybe taken some more shots downfield before it got out of hand? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, um, I felt like we were in position to try to create an explosive there. Um, it just it just seemed like those drives that got to midfield, got across the 50, we started to get in that zone where we're going to put the ball up some. That's where the breakdowns happen. And all of a sudden there, you're kind of fighting to get back on schedule and trying to, you know, fighting to get back in rhythm. And, um, you know, we, we want high percentage plays. We want first and second down efficiency, you know, and um, just weren't able to get in that rhythm to get those shots. And obviously, once we did take them, you know, we, we, we were able to connect on the one. I thought the naked game was good. The boot game was good for Mike. Um, he was able to move the ball throwing it that way too. But... Um, just wasn't there for us today, and so you know we gotta we gotta look at that, look at the design. You know, certainly that starts with the, the coaches and then the execution of the design, and figure out ways we can get better where we're you know playing against good teams, and you know we want to we want to have a chance to beat. Kind of along those lines, Brock, for the success you've had this season, you know, back in Alabama, Georgia, now this game there. What do you feel like has to change to be more competitive against the best teams? Yeah, I mean, I think each each game has a different narrative, um, but on the whole, it's it's it, you know it's about um, maximizing your opportunities and limiting the explosive touchdowns. I think Alabama and Tennessee both had explosive plays from their offense that <clears throat> that were able to get behind us. T today it was a run game against Alabama. It was you know they hit a couple double moves on us and got behind us. Um, 
every snap matters and the ability to cap those and down them. You know, I thought you know Tennessee was able to outrun us a couple times on the perimeter, but we, we, we covered enough and we forced that ball to be long enough to where they overthrew it, they were off target. Um, you know, part of that's just developing our personnel, part of that's recruiting. It's just, we gotta improve, um, you know, uh, in every area of that, in that respect. I thought against Georgia, you know, it was a game that, <clears throat> when you see both, all three of these, these games, you see an offense that sputtered, an offense that wasn't able to find rhythm, and on the Georgia game, it was, it was missed opportunities offensively. We had, we had Will behind uh, the corner. We had um, Jaden in the, going into the red zone where we had a fumble. We had a wheel route on the sideline. And I think what, what you see is the best teams in this league don't miss their opportunities. They capitalize and they make you pay. Um, in the two wins we've had, I felt like we had that as part of our identity. And you, you felt like every time they exposed their ribs, we landed a punch. You know, um, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, we didn't. And so, um, you know, Gentry, I don't know if that answers your question, um, you know, as, as succinctly as I'd like to. I think we have to grow and develop as a program. I think we have to develop the players that we have and the players that we're returning. I think we got to recruit into that gap, too. That's important. But um, I also think there's going to be play designs that are there and opportunities that are there where we have to we have to become dangerous when our opponent leaves uh, leaves you know, leaves themselves exposed for a punch. Um, tonight, you know, again, we can't have situations like we had in the second half. We'll go in at the end of the first half with a punt return for a touchdown. It's a critical break time. You know, we have to have a coverage unit that downs the ball, and we got to get our defense out there and force them to go the long, hard way. The, again, the second half to me, you go fourth down conversion there on the first drive, you know, we're probably having a different conversation. Um, you know, that stop was big for them, and then they came out. I think uh, we forced a second and long, and then then came a barrage of explosive runs. And we're going to look at each one of those and determine that, you know, um, whether the structure broke down or there was someone that was a little late on the fit or it was tackling. But whatever it is, those will be the things that we need to improve upon to make sure that we can, um, again, force them to line it up the snap, that weather those short fields and hopefully get drives to finish with field goals. You know, it'll be a, a total look because obviously we're, we're looking to close that gap to the top end of the league. Um, and we're just not there yet. It's a reflection of where we are. What happened on the special teams on the returns tonight? They had two returners they, they, and we, we expected them to do that. Um, I thought the, the touchdown was, was um, you know, they out leveraged us. So they ran around us. We weren't able to get to ball level to the field side and cut the ball off and, you know, um, again, good returner. And he got around us and then outran us to the end zone. The others, to me, were about not winning one-on-ones on the inside. I felt like we had people in positions, but we weren't off blocks. And, you know, when you get covered up um, on punt return, it, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a challenging situation with, with the playmaker in space, and we weren't uh, we weren't collapsing coverage. We weren't winning those one on ones, and the ball got out on us. Um, we were fortunate to down it a couple of times, honestly, and uh, that became again a critical part of their their success, particularly in the second half after the, the touchdown in the first half. What are kind of your initial thoughts on the season overall? I mean, we we've shown progress. Um, again, you, you have to, you know, we're, we're disappointed right now, and it's, tonight was painful. I mean, I, I just I hurt for our team, I hurt for our fans, I hurt for our program um, to have made the strides we made. We wanted the chance to extend our season, we fell short, but um, we're going to have a chance to step back and really take a big picture view. I can tell you that we've had a lot of fun the last few weeks. I can tell you that um, there's a belief and a feeling internally that, you know, we are closing those gaps. and. Um, we need to capture that sense of improvement and use that as fuel to, to um, just to continue to strive forward. And we will. And that, that's that's um, it's inevitable that we will continue to improve this program, no different than we have from year one to year two. I felt like um, obviously, if you look all the way back to when we first got here, um, we were in a tough place, and you know it's taken time to get us to this point where. 
Um, you know, we finished year five and seven, and we have you know consecutive conference wins heading into the last game. Um, I think when you look at our team, we're bigger, faster, stronger, and you see there is um, you know there is this gradual closing of the gap that exists in our conference. Um, but um, we sense improvement, and we see trajectory, and we're going to stay faithful in our process because the process is righteous. It doesn't deliver us to where we want to be right now. You know, we have to take ownership of that. This is where we are, but um, we have to have the patience to stay committed to it, and we'll get to where we're going. Anything else? Any outstanding on C.J. Taylor? C.J. wasn't able to finish the game. Um, he, he was x-rayed. It wasn't a fracture. Um, I expect he'll be okay, but we'll, we'll do further analysis on that to, to uh, kind of determine the extent of the injury. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.